So there's a ghost in the seemingly unstoppable Mercedes winning machine after all. Max Verstappen and Red Bull ended the title winning team's unbeaten start to the Formula 1 season with a commanding victory in the second part of the championship Silverstone doubleheader. Oh, please don't make me say it. Okay, fine. In the 70th anniversary Grand Prix at Silverstone. Ah, silly name aside, the 70th anniversary Grand Prix was a much livelier affair even though it lacked the British Grand Prix's dramatic ending. But was this a Mercedes win thrown away, a Red Bull victory earned, or an artificial interruption of the status quo because of some special circumstances? Before we dive into the answers, why not give this video the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already to have easy access to more videos like this, and pop the notifications on so you know when they're ready for your viewing pleasure. Now let's dig into Mercedes' first defeat of F1 2020, and why it fears looking silly again in just a few days' time. It was clear early in the weekend that the second Silverstone event would play out quite differently to the first because of a mix of specific circumstances including warmer weather, a softer range of compounds and raised tyre pressures following the tyre failures late in the British Grand Prix. Stick with us because we'll make this as quick and as painless as possible. Pirelli picks three of its five available compounds to be the hard, the medium and the soft tyre at any given race. At the first Silverstone event, Pirelli C1 was the hard tyre, the C2 was the medium, and the C3 was the soft. But for this weekend, the C2 became the hard tyre, the C3 was the medium, and the C4 was the soft. Still with us? Basically, everything was a step softer. And here's the thing, the key difference wasn't that the softer C4 was available, it was that the more durable C1 wasn't. So the teams knew coming into this weekend that tyres would be more marginal. It was so bad that the soft could barely manage a lap without dropping off at the end, and come qualifying, it was expected that every driver would try to get through Q2 using the mediums because nobody wanted to have to use the soft in the race. But Max Verstappen deviated from the norm and used the hardest tyre, the C2, instead. It was easy to view this as simply doing something different, but Verstappen was actually surprised nobody else did the same. His logic was, the medium tyre was actually last week's soft and a week earlier, nobody had wanted to qualify on that tyre or go anywhere near it in the Grand Prix. But Verstappen was alone among the front runners to go in this direction. It would soon transpire that he would fly on either compound, but starting on the hards, let him crank up the pressure early. Mercedes knew that in hot temperatures and on a high energy circuit, blistering would be an issue. It discussed that with its drivers, it even knew the sort of temperatures the problem would occur. What it didn't know is that the conflation of circumstances would put Mercedes at the very worst end of the spectrum for the tyre drama and Red Bull would be at the complete opposite. Yes, there have been hints that the 2020 Mercedes is more vulnerable in warmer conditions, but nothing to the degree that we saw in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Poleman Valtteri Bottas and teammate Lewis Hamilton were quickly forced into greater tyre management than Verstappen, so neither of them could break away on medium tyres in the opening stint. And when they both switched to hards for the middle part of the race, the problem wasn't any better they still had to reduce their performance and had no tyre longevity. Their lack of pace meant Verstappen was even faster while running on old hard tyres at the end of his first stint and he was able to take control, running longer and rejoining from his pit stop nicely clear of Hamilton and right behind Bottas who he passed after just a couple of corners. Mercedes was then powerless to respond. Even when Hamilton was able to extend his second stint and enjoy a multi-lap tyre offset for the final stages, he didn't have anywhere near enough to get close to the race leader. Bottas was a disgruntled third, having led Hamilton until being called in for his second stop 10 laps earlier than his teammate. After the race, he even accused Mercedes of being asleep with our strategy. Any paranoia would be understandable, but the strategy wasn't a conspiracy to favour Hamilton. Bottas was suffering from a vibration on his rear tyre that was becoming serious, and the tyre itself looked in ugly shape. Given it had suffered failures on both cars late in the British Grand Prix, Mercedes played it safe this time. It wanted to bank track position because at this point, it wasn't even about challenging Verstappen, it was about making sure they didn't slip back any further. But when Bottas pit and the team inspected the tyres, it became clear that beyond the blistering the tread was in good health. So Hamilton, who wasn't suffering from such a serious vibration from his own blistered tyre, was told he could continue if he felt okay, and that made the difference between the teammates. Team boss Toto Wolff said afterwards he understood Bottas' frustration but countered there was little more the team could do because the car simply wasn't quick enough on the day. And Mercedes was at a loss afterwards to explain why this was the case because there were so many potential factors. 
A setup change to protect the front left had transferred more of the load onto the rears and there wasn't the capacity there for the rears to accept that increased burden. The Mercedes produces more downforce than any other car, so it puts greater stress on the tyres anyway, and raised pressures after last week bulged the crown of the tyres like a balloon according to Hamilton, so maybe Mercedes was more sensitive to that. And all of this in the context of more challenging conditions and a range of tyre compounds that made life difficult for every team on the grid. With the coming Spanish Grand Prix this weekend expected to take place in temperatures of more than 30 degrees at Barcelona, tracing the source of the lack of performance and finding a way to improve it is a matter of urgency for Mercedes. As trackside engineering director Andrew Shovelin said, if we don't get on top of it, we've got another Sunday of looking silly. Early on in the race, Verstappen was asked to back off from Hamilton's Mercedes because he was running too close and risked hurting his tyres. It was clear Verstappen was up for a fight when in response he told his race engineer that this was the best chance he had to finally get close to a Mercedes and he wasn't about to sit back and drive like a grandma. Verstappen took this position because he had clocked the state of Hamilton's rear mediums while running behind him and he knew that Mercedes was vulnerable. Armed with the knowledge he could definitely run longer in the first stint, and emboldened by the mini crisis he could see starting to engulf the cars in front, Verstappen kept the pressure on. But it wasn't a gung-ho attitude. He just had the confidence and the clear-headedness to maintain a high level of pace while still trying to manage both the sensitive front left and the rear tyres. Verstappen's feel for the rubber underneath him is arguably his most underrated skill and he used it to devastating effect to swing the race comfortably in his favour. He was calculating the risk at all times and realised that the circumstances meant he could up the ante. Mercedes was the only competition, so it didn't matter much if Verstappen nudged his tyres a little bit into the red zone because the Mercedes were in way worse shape. Verstappen navigated his middle stint on the mediums with ease, and once back on the hards for his final stint, he even had the awareness to keep some performance in reserve late on, just in case Hamilton did come back aggressively. But in truth, Verstappen never looked vulnerable to such an attack. The race brought out a confidence and cockiness in the Dutchman that we've not seen so far in 2020, best highlighted by the late race reprise of last week's joke to his engineer to have a drink and stay hydrated, and this time the addition to wash his hands as well to maintain good hygiene. It was Verstappen at his absolute swaggering best, and Mercedes was just simply too slow to do anything about it. So that's how Red Bull and its driver outfoxed and outgunned Mercedes to take their first win of 2020. But how impressed were you by Verstappen's performance? Will you take a punt on a repeat in the Spanish Grand Prix? And with Verstappen now ahead of Bottas in the points, do you think he might have become Hamilton's biggest threat for the title? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you like what you've seen. Subscribe to The Race for more videos explaining the best stories on and off track in Formula 1 and click the notifications button to make sure you join us again next time.